Good day. How you doing out there? Thank you for joining me once again. Listen to the Brian Glaze Gibbs story. This is my ministry. Um, I've been getting a lot of DM, a lot of email. Ask me a question about Kayshawn, um, Calvin Hudson. And what was my deal in? What type of individual was Calvin Hudson, Kayshawn? And, you know, I, like I said, I got mixed emotion, mixed feeling about Kayshawn. Um, I did, like I said right now, met Kayshawn. Um, this is the individual that we are talking about at this present time. You know I'm saying Calvin Hudson, Kayshawn. Um, I met Kayshawn, you know what I'm saying, years ago. And when I met Kayshawn years ago, I met Kayshawn on a strength of Tut. Like, you know, one thing about it is like right now, Tut knew a lot of people, man. You know, he had different relationship with a lot of different people. And basically right now was because of my relationship with Tut. Um, I met a lot of people through Tut on the strength of Tut. So just so happened, I met Kayshawn on the strength of Tut. And how that went is I was incarcerated at the time. And when I was incarcerated, you know, um, facing life, had a body. Um, right now where it's like, you know, me and Tut used to talk often because we was once business partner. So when I used to call and me and Tut used to talk all the time and during this particular time, like, you know, when I used to talk to Tut, what he used to do is all depends upon where he was at. So during that particular time, he put Kayshawn on the phone. And once he put Kayshawn on the phone, we started talking. So for the very first time that Tut put me on the phone with Kayshawn, the conversation went like this. Hey, Glaze, how you doing, man? Nice to meet you, man. I heard a lot of good things about you. Hey, let me know what you want me to do. If you need anything taken care of, man, let me know. I'd be more than gladly to help you. You know what? Like I say, here it is. Only thing I knew then about him, you know, he was a good guy. You know, he's out there in the street and he took his business. And for the fact that he wanted to lend his service to assist me in helping me with my situation or circumstance. And, you know, he offered whatever he can do for me, he would do. So, you know what? You know, my hat's off to him for that. Because once again, he don't know me. Only thing he going by is his relationship that he had with Tut. So, right, as far as right now, me and him never met. Me and him never dealt with each other. Each other. Nothing ever happened. Only thing what he wanted to do, extend his services based upon his relationship with Tut and based upon my reputation. And I can remember telling him at the time, listen, man, I appreciate that. But at this present time, what I would like for you to do, I would like for you to take care of any situation that you can for your majesty. Your majesty and him grew up together and they was from the same neighborhood. And your majesty was in a world of trouble. I think he had two homicides during that period of time, um, little Damien and Tatum that he later got convicted for. I say, so if you can assist a majesty, your majesty opposed to me, guess what? That would be a big help or whatever. Okay, long story short, I talked to the brother a few more times, but I never met up with him until about you know two years later. That's when I actually met up with him. So even right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read something. And this is what it said right here. Okay, I'm trying to fix it up. Okay, can y'all see that? Couple shot to death in a Brooklyn projects. So what happened is this made the news. Like when K. Sean was murdered, you know what I'm saying? They say couple shot to death in a Brooklyn project. Um, it went on to say a man and a woman who the police say was apparently involved in drug dealing was shot and killed in a Brooklyn housing project last night. Officials say Calvin Hudson 23 years old, was found in his 12th floor apartment in the Tompkins houses at 85 Tompkins Avenue in the Bedford-Stuyvesant section. The police say he died a multiple gunshot wound. Okay, Tawana Wilson, 20, who was who the police described as Mr. Hudson's girlfriend, was found in a stairway leading to the 11th floor of the same apartment building. She was shot several times in the chest. Both victims was declared dead at the scene. Okay, even during that period of time, you know, when that was going on, you know, the first person name that came up involved with his murder was mine. Automatically, the word was on the street that me, Brian Glaze Gibbs and the Eminem crew was responsible for, you know what I'm saying, Kayshawn and 
his girlfriend, Death. And honestly speaking, don't get me wrong, we was at war then, and I'll probably go into that story later because once again, K. Sean um, was involved with you know one of my friends being murdered. And right now, where's technicality? We was at war. We did have an incident that took place um, quite some time ago. And where, as far as they had me, they had a drop on me. It was Kayshawn, Allah Justice, and another guy. And basically right now is they was coming from paying a respect to Derek Hamilton and J.R. father, Mr. Bush. So they was coming from that funeral parlor and they spotted me. And when they spotted me, they was in the cab and they saw me standing. And you know what? I always felt that I was very observant, watching, like, you know, my whereabout and who's around me. And once again, right now is these guys, technicality snuck up on me, man. And when I saw them coming, honestly speaking, I say, damn, they got me. You know what I'm saying? And which they did, you know, but only thing saved me at that present time, me being me and me like, you know, acting, performing my ASS off as if I had a weapon, you know? So when Allah just embraced me, he felt the best. And right now was he thought I was strapped, but at that present time, I wasn't strapped. You know, only did I have my bulletproof vest, you know what I'm saying, a bunch of jewelry on and a feel like sweatsuit. You know, like to me, if I was a hell of a driver, what I would have did is I would have like jumped into my Bobo and try to back out going down that one way street backwards. But I knew automatically if I would have done that, they would have caught me and they would have executed me. So, you know what? I just stay there, play poker and I bluff them and I won. Now... Getting back to, like I said right now, was I talk, I'll talk about that story at a later date. But once again, like, you know, with these guys or whatever, they was out there. They was terrorizing shit. They was doing their thing. And they had a lot of people afraid. Like I say right now, was they was knocking a lot of people off. So just so happened, we did went to war. And right now, was guess what? If I, Brian Glaze Gibbs, was responsible for his death, I would have played guilty to it. Like I had the opportunity to play guilty to things that known and unknown. And right now that would have been one of them because guess what? That's two murders and there's no statute limitation on murders. It regards what they can come get you, you know what I'm saying? 30, 40, 50 years from now and they can indict you and that penalty still carry 25 to life. So no, for anybody that want to know or anybody that's out there or anybody that thinking that I or the Eminem crew has something to do with this individual with this story right here, you're wrong. Cope was shot to death in a Brooklyn project. You know, once again, I did not have nothing to do with this gentleman, K. Sean, being murdered. And like I told you, if I did, trust me, I would have played guilty to it. But I did not play guilty to it because I didn't have nothing to do with it. But anyway, like I told you, for more of my story, what I want you to do is hit that like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, the Brian Glaze Gibbs channel. Follow me on Instagram, Brian Glaze Gibbs. Get your signed copy of straight, hey, get your signed copy of Beyond Lucky, the Brian Glaze Gibbs story, a true story of change and redemption. Listen, I tell you about the good, the bad, and the ugly, letting you know crime doesn't play, letting you know the street life is for suckers, and there's no shortcut in life. Get your copy now by email me, Brian, B-R-I-A-N, Gibbs, G-I-B-B-S, 1201 at yahoo.com. Also, go into the description box and you know, order your t-shirt, order your mug, order your sweat hood. Listen, you know, go to Teespring and order your merchandise, the Brian Glaze Gibbs merchandise. Listen, folks. My story is my ministry, and this is the blueprint that will save children, the upcoming children, the upcoming generation, to stop making that multi-billion dollar prison system their permanent address. Hey, also, I got the audio books out. Check out Straight From The Street, Volume 1, Straight From The Street, Volume 2 on www.audible.com. All right? Hey, thank you for joining in. You know what? Once again, my name is Brian Glaze Gibbs. If y'all have any subject topic that y'all want me to talk about, email me. Brian, B-R-I-A-N, Gibbs, G-I-B-B-S, 1201 at yahoo.com. Listen, communicate. Let's get out there. Let's, you know, let's make this channel right now the people channel. 
Let's talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Like I say, I was once the problem, and now I'm seeking to be part of the solution. So right now, how can I be part of the solution? By listening, by answering questions, by talking about everything from A to Z, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But I want participation. I want everybody to join in. Guess what? Be mindful, be respectful, and you will get a response in time. Only thing I want to do is right now communicate. I want to share my experience to get folks to understand it's not worth it. If I can change, anybody can change. Once again, hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel. Thank you.